Your JPEGs just don't look like film. There you go, I've said it. But do I actually believe it? And even if I do believe it, does it even matter? And that's exactly what I want to do in today's video. We're going to be taking the real film stock and comparing it to the Fujifilm JPEG and seeing just how well they match up. And my name's Goffy, and if you've not been here before, you'll know that I've actually done this before. I've done a few different videos in the past, and in today's video, I'm going to be taking some images from them, bringing them up to date, and just having a bit of a recap because I think my feelings towards Fujifilm JPEGs have definitely changed over the last couple of years. In terms of the structure of this video, if you want to hop around, feel free. First of all, we're going to be talking about the built-in Fuji simulations and how well they stack up. We're then going to have a bit of a look at the recipes. Then we're going to talk about whether or not any of this even matters and a little bit of recapping towards the end. So if you want to hop around this video, feel free to do that now. So we're going to kick off with these Fuji simulations. They come built into most Fuji cameras. You've got things in there like Provia, Astia, Velvia, Acros, and a bunch of others too. Now you might be quick to think, are they actually trying to copy the film stock here? Or are they just trying to deliver a bit of a look? But according to their website, our film simulation modes mimic not only the colour of some famous analog films, but the tones and contrast. So it definitely sounds like that is their intention. Now I've actually done two videos on this in the past, we've done one for Velvia and one for Acros and we're going to kick off with Velvia first. Velvia is a film stock that delivers an awful lot of punch and vibrance. And the actual film itself is a slide film, so if you've never seen slide film before it looks awesome because the film's not orange, it looks exactly like the images and there's something so special about how they feel. So first up then, here's an image up on the screen now. Do you think this is film or digital? I'll give you a few seconds and then how about this with them next to each other? Now, I think personally with these two images, it was quite easy to tell. The film stock just has these different kind of tonality to it and it has very, very different highlights and shadows. And this is a theme across most of that video that the images don't really stack up that well. They're both kind of saturated, but beyond that, there's not that much similarity. The other Fujifilm simulation that I've done a video for is Acros. Again, I've done a full video on this, but up on the screen now is one of the images from that video. Now, what is it? Is this film or is it digital? Having given you a few seconds, if I put them next to each other, is it easier to tell? Now for me, again, I find this pretty easy to tell, especially once you've seen them side by side and once I've told you which one one of them is. I don't think they match up that well at all. The film definitely has a better gradation, I think, from the shadows into the midtones and the midtones into the highlights. There's something really nice about how it transitions between them. Whereas with the digital file, again, it looks kind of flat, a little bit like the Velvia did in comparison. So I think we end up here with a conclusion that the film stock and the digital file, they just don't look the same. There's so much of a difference between the two that I personally find it hard to call the Acros Acros and the Velvia Velvia, if that makes any sense. Now, although they said on the website that Fuji are trying to copy their simulations, I do think that this element was probably just a pretty good marketing trick in terms of being able to tell people they can shoot Acros on a digital camera, even if it doesn't really look that close. But all is not lost at this point because there is this massive Fuji community out there that is building something called recipes, and that's what we're going to talk about next. So all isn't lost as Fujifilm offer an awful lot of options to edit your JPEGs in camera. And this is where the Fuji community has done something awesome. Lots of Facebook groups have banded together with websites like Fuji Weekly as well that are offering you a whole bunch of settings to program into your camera to try and emulate different film stocks. Now one of the most popular videos on this channel was when I took the real portrait film stock and I compared it to the Fuji Weekly recipe. Now I'm going to chuck an image up on the screen again now and I'd be interested to know if you can confidently tell me is this film or is this digital? That is in fact an image straight out of my X100V and if you were able to tell that that was a digital file, the JPEG, then I'd be interested to know down in the comments what was it about it that told you that it was digital and didn't convince you enough that it was film? But for me personally, I do think in isolation like the one I'm showing on the screen now, at a glance, it does look like film. But the problem is, a little bit like earlier, if I put the film next to the JPEG up on the screen, I think it's pretty obvious which one is the film. The film, again, just has better tones throughout the image, doesn't look quite so flat. And I think once I've shown you the one up on the screen now, if I chuck another two up on the screen, you can probably confidently tell me which one is which. So I think we end up in a slightly similar situation to the simulations. Does the portrait recipe actually look like portrait film? I don't think it does, but slightly different to the recipe though, I think if I show you an image in isolation like this one, at a glance, it genuinely does look like film, even if it's not portrait, the actual film stock that it's trying to emulate, that it looks like. 
and I think maybe over time if Fuji keep giving us extra adjustability to the JPEGs in camera we'll be able to get even closer because even now if you think about it the options that you have in your Fuji camera are still nowhere near as extensive as something like Lightroom. If we were able to tweak different color channels individually things like that then we'd get an awful lot closer to that film like look because I can definitely make images look better in Lightroom than I can straight out of camera. So then does any of this even matter? Does it matter that the recipe doesn't match the film stock? Now for me personally, the answer to that is a resounding no. I just don't care. And the main reason for that is because these images straight out of camera, even if they don't perfectly match the film stock, still look awesome and in isolation I do think are convincing enough sometimes to look like film. And I get an awful lot of value out of having JPEGs that look like this because I'm able to quickly send a JPEG to my phone whilst I'm traveling and upload it to something like my Instagram story and not have to spend any time editing. And if you sat there saying to yourself, no real photographer shoots JPEG only, well the next section is for you. And this section is, yes, clearly if I'm doing commercial work, I still shoot raw. But the difference is when I'm shooting for myself, I actually shoot raw and JPEG. And you might be saying, well, that's a bit silly because you've just been talking about how good JPEGs are. But at the end of the day, if I take a photo that is print worthy, I want all the flexibility in post as possible. But the fact is I'm shooting raw and JPEG. I haven't shot a camera brand in the last five years where I have shot RAW and JPEG because JPEGs were just there taking up space. And instead, with Fujifilm, I've got JPEGs that actually provide value. And another thing that I found recently that provides a lot of value for me is I've made my own recipe and I'll link that video again down in the description. It's a video where I share my personal settings and them settings match my own editing style. And the value that I get from that as well as having good JPEGs is the fact that the live view on the rear screen of my cameras shows me a reasonably good look at what the edited image might look like and it helps me visualize what I want my image to be. And in that case, even if I'm shooting raw only, there's still some value there in messing around with these settings. Things. So there we have it then. Do Fujifilm JPEGs look like the film stock they're trying to emulate? Probably not. Most cases, no they don't and a lot of people can tell the difference and I've done Instagram polls and it seems pretty decisive. But at the same time, I think in isolation some of these JPEGs do look good enough to trick a few people and regardless if they do trick people, they still look awesome. And because they look awesome, I still get some value out of them and I still shoot this way so that I can share quick things up to socials without having to edit every photo I take. Hopefully the video title didn't trigger you too much and you've enjoyed this video and if you did, please do not forget to like and subscribe. There's plenty more Fuji content coming to the channel and I'm actually off to Prague next week as well so if you want to see images and videos from that, please don't forget to follow me over on Instagram as well. Thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Cheers.